Welcome. Today we'll be talking about the future mobile industry and joining me on set is none other than the CEO of General Motors East Africa, Rita Kavasha. Welcome. Maybe Rita, right now we are in the middle of this number of cars. I can see quite a number of cars here. Which one did you drive to work today? Uh, today I drove at the Chevrolet Trailblazer. This is the, next, the last addition into our portfolio. Really powerful four-wheel drive, uh, 2.8 liter uh, station wagon. Very powerful. You are in an industry that um, has over the years been a key foreign exchange earner for Kenya in terms of the exports we do to other countries within East Africa, the likes of Uganda, Rwanda, Congo. And looking at the trade perspective of GM, how have the numbers been? Uh, the numbers when we look at 2014, the industry grew by about 25%. This was a phenomenal growth that we've had in the last 10 years. Uh, driven mainly here in Kenya by um, construction, real estate, uh, road construction, and some of the big projects that the government is undertaking, like lab sets, standard gauge railway, and all that, that has, to a great extent, driven the growth uh, of the market here in Kenya. But in the region, they're still very, very low in terms of volume. But the prospects for 2015 going forward are, are looking quite good, especially in, in Tanzania with the discovery of gas, with the works that Tanzania is doing around public transportation, we see a big opportunity there. Of course, there are those skeptics who have been saying that Africa's story has not changed. But as we've have, we have witnessed, Africa is rising in terms of people have more better incomes. We are seeing more companies setting up in Africa, to be precise, in Kenya. Looking at the car industry, in terms of the growth you mentioned, and uh, the aspects that have been driving this growth. Um, as a company, in terms of job creation, how has this changed the workforce that works for you? Because of the growth uh, in the motor sector, uh, this year alone we have uh, increased our manpower by about 15% to take advantage of the growth uh, of, the, of the economy, the prospects for the region. So Africa, uh, there will be no one day that Africa will be rising and everybody will be called and be told that Africa has risen. It started to rise quite some years back, as you can see in the growth, the middle class uh, uh, team is, is growing quite rapidly, there's demand for distribution, there's demand for food, so there is good, good prospects for the entire of, uh, of Africa and we, this, uh, we see this through manufacturing uh, in terms of motor vehicle demand for uh, distribution truck, demand for transportation trucks, that tells you the economy is growing and that the middle class is equally growing. Which is your flagship brand? Now that I know you do quite a number of uh, assortments from the buses, from the pickups. Uh, three years, uh, our flagship brand has been the medium duty truck. Uh, again, just to uh, demonstrate that this is the product that is used for distribution, whether it is sand distribution, whether it's hardware distribution, purely driven by the increase in construction and increase in consumption. Opening up of new supermarket chain because of food demand, food being transported from farm to market, that has driven the growth of the medium, uh, medium duty truck. The public transport system also is driving some uh, growth because of change in regulation. Uh, in 2013, the government uh, uh, put to order the public transportation where uh, less than 26-seater uh, vehicles are not being allowed into the CBD to support the government agenda on easing uh, congestion in, in the urban centers. And that has also driven the growth of the uh, public transport, especially medium 26-seater uh, to about uh, 43 uh, capacity seating but uh, that is secondary to the growth of the medium duty truck. So we are playing in those both uh, uh, positions, but the growth is mainly uh, on the light commercial. From where you sit, have the counties played a part in terms of just driving the sales volumes for GM? Uh, the county uh, structure is beginning to take shape. Uh, I think there was a lot of landing, so we have not seen a major boost in terms of business coming from the county. Uh, but uh, we, we focused 
to see a lot of that in this financial year as well as going forward as counties uh, develop their strategic plan where they're going to play and all that that is going to drive a lot of demand especially for utility vehicles again construction is going to continue to be a big a driver for growth in the county uh, area as well as the uh, services to the public meaning there's going to be demand for pickup trucks there's going to be demand for education uh, type of vehicles ambulances even special purpose vehicles we are seeing a big demand for mobile clinics for instance because uh, the county cannot maybe be able to develop hospitals in each and every district but they can provide some medical care using mobile trucks in terms of um, the level of participation we are seeing from uh, the domestic market when it comes to people who are supplying GM with materials, people who come to do the, the casual jobs, um, how has been the situation like? The support uh, services are also growing. Uh, for instance, in our factory, we've had to outsource uh, seat fabrication for our commercial trucks. So we have areas in, the, in our production line that have been outsourced to local uh, content suppliers to come and be part of the value chain, to be part of the production, but they're handling that type of business. Uh, body fabrication. Uh, most of the auto sector uh, players do not have uh, in-house uh, body fabrication capability. So all that work, all that growth has been shared with the local content suppliers, whether it is uh, uh, supply of uh, bodies, supply of uh, harnesses, batteries, and um, uh, supply of seats. 30% uh, of what uh, we produce is, is local content. Ah. So that, that's a big business opportunity right there for the secondary suppliers of, uh, of material. Assembling locally, you are exempted from the import duty. Yes. And uh, how has this enabled GM to do better pricing for its products? And has this impacted um, in any way in terms of just driving the sales numbers? Duty uh, zero rated CKD is, uh, is zero rated, so that's uh, a great uh, addition in terms of uh, uh, ordering of materials here and also passing that uh, benefit to the, to the customer. Sometimes you get challenges in the area of um, uh, FX exchange rate, like now it's 100 shillings to the dollar. That does not do good, even though the price of the product, the cost of, of money becomes uh, very, very unaffordable. Uh, so in terms of uh, passing over, we pass quite a bit of that to our customers and it is it's an advantage uh, to the market as well. So that subsidy has helped us quite a bit. Again, uh, cost of production also is driven by also volume. Uh, and as the volume continues to grow, uh, then the absorption cost becomes lower and you're able to pass even more uh, to the customer. So as these prospects for growth begin to emerge in our region, there is a direct relation to better pricing in the marketplace. Speaking about better prices, I've noticed that um, the number of cars on our roads is just growing by the day. You can actually confirm this with the amount of time you spend daily in traffic. But the interesting bit, as you've rightly put it, is we are seeing a variety. We are seeing the trucks on the roads. We are seeing the, the pickups. Let's talk about the pickups that um, GM is doing. Of course, I know you do uh, quite a number of uh, the models. We have the luxury pickups and, of course, the ones that are being mostly used for commercial. How has been the market like and uh, what has been driving the uptake of the pickups? Uh, the pickup uh, market segment that is driving growth is uh, not so much the luxury but the workhorse, uh, single, single turn pickup truck, because, again, that is a work tool and you find a lot of the SME, the SME population, the SME market opportunity is huge uh, in this country and uh, there is a good uptake uh, of pickup trucks and we're, we're projecting about maybe this year the industry will sell 30% of the volume that we will sell a total industry. Speaking about entrepreneurship, Rita, um, a lot has been happening within the African space when it comes to the spirit of entrepreneurship. And of course, you have the Global Entrepreneurship Summit coming up. What are your thoughts around the African story of growing the African businesses that can be able to compete on the global scale? 
great opportunity. A great opportunity, I think, personally for Africa, having inter interacted with a lot of the entrepreneurs that come to buy our products, there is a lot of energy, there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of idea and innovation uh, that I see from the entrepreneurs who come to purchase our products. And I think this summit is going to create an opportunity for partnership between uh, formal industry, big, big corporations like General Motors and entrepreneurs that are looking to grow their businesses. Uh, I see opportunity in terms of linkages with the entrepreneurs that are looking at supplying, for instance, to the auto industry, whether it is supplying of steel, whether it is supplying of local uh, content material, body fabrication, um, services, uh, whether it is financial services, or um, advertising services, there is a lot of opportunity. And this forum is going to give uh, PPPs opportunities to link and to develop big uh, strategic uh, uh, entrepreneurial uh, development for, for Africa. Um, you've been in this industry for nearly two decades, and um, you've actually been the CEO for close to four to five years now. Uh, what are some of the reflections and the flashbacks you have when it comes to some of your highest moments when it comes to running this company? Uh, the highest moments for me have been uh, uh, growth and opportunity. Uh, there is a lot of opportunity in our region uh, compared to other markets. The opportunity here is massive and I have been very happy to be part of the growth, part of the success of uh, that concept that you are talking about, Africa rising, because I am experiencing it on a day-to-day -day basis, that the economy is growing and I am a player in terms of uh, providing a uh, transportation solution to the growth of, of this region. So those have been great moments and um, I am looking more towards now a sustainability of this business, the growth, the employees that we have hired, how do they continue to work and to hire more Kenyans because the, 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 this is the challenge of unemployment is huge. So when businesses thrive, they can support the government's agenda in terms of employment. So working with the, uh, with the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and International Business, for us that is very, very important, working with KEPSA to drive growth, to drive opportunity, to drive good business processes so that businesses can be able to thrive and we support the government's agenda in terms of hiring more people. So the whole opportunity around expanding the regional market gives, uh, gives the manufacturing sector in Kenya a big leverage. You are one of the women that a good number of um, aspiring entrepreneurs, people in the public sector, people in the private sector look up to um, owing to the fact that you've been running a successful company ever since you took over. Looking at some of the key values you have as a person, what are they? Uh, some of the key uh, success ingredients that I have have been named as entrepreneurship, driving for results, success uh, driven, team, team, teamwork with dealers, players, understanding of the markets and uh, really great values there, especially on that area of entrepreneurship, because if you're running a business and you lack that business acumen, that DNA, that co direct connection with the customer, then it becomes very difficult to run a successful uh, business. And, and I think I, I possess uh, quite a bit of, of that in me. When a customer comes to have a conversation with me, I am right into that customer's shoes. So when, uh, when they're talking about purchase of a product, when they're talking about getting into a business that they have a contract that they must fulfill, that they must supply to, I am in their shoes understanding exactly what is it that they need from me to be successful. And our company has been outstanding in terms of innovating products that really address the core needs of our customers have managed to rise from the lowest position in the company to getting to the top. Do you still believe this is something young people in business, young people employed can 
always work towards because we are having a generation where you're seeing people want to become the CEOs after they've graduated. Uh, for our industry, it's not that easy to become a CEO immediately after graduation because uh, it's a complex business that you have to really uh, learn quite a bit uh, about it to be a very, very successful CEO. Uh, so putting a few years in terms of learning, the operation working uh, in a, an automotive business gives you leverage to be a really uh, successful CEO. Uh, but yes. It is possible to be a CEO. I am a classic example of having risen from uh, a sales representative 20 years ago to CEO of a company like General Motors. Uh, a bit of hard work, a bit of also the environment that I found myself into that supports growth, that identifies leadership, nurtures leadership, trains leadership potential, and giving uh, someone an opportunity to be a leader. So that has been also a great plus for me. But all I did was in whatever assignment that I was given, I did my very best. So my advice to young people aspiring to be CEO, uh, it, it, it is a rewarding job because you don't only do a particular uh, single job you run an entire uh, operation, there is a responsibility that comes with it, uh, there is sacrifice also that comes with it, but it is very, very rewarding if uh, one succeeds. You do a very commendable job at GM, and how do you balance your work and your life? I have come to learn that uh, you don't balance because then there will always be competition, one against the other. So with experience, I have learned to integrate the two. So they are one and the same. And uh, I make sure that important events, important occasions in my personal life are part and parcel of my work life. Yes. I'm just curious to know what makes you tick and also how did you end up in this automobile industry of course knowing not so many women have this fascination for cars how I ended up in the automobile industry it was not by choice uh, I just applied for a job but all I did was I specified which type of organization I would be interested to work in and it was not very specific in terms of automotive, but it was more specific in terms must be a multinational organization, must be an, an organization with uh, opportunity for me to rise, opportunity for me to work in different areas. And when the hiring consultant called me and told me, I have found a place where I think it meets your expectation and it is in an auto automotive company, I said, well, Let's give it a try. So I went through the interview, I got the job, and the rest was history. Are there some CEOs that you personally look up to, and um, who are they? Each and every CEO I meet, myself, there is always something to learn from somebody. So I look at w what is it that I can take, whether it is a lesson around a challenge that he faced and how he overcame the challenge, or a breakthrough innovation that I can tap into. Uh, and a lot of the CEOs uh, I have met or interacted with have been outstanding. But uh, two CEOs stand out for me. Uh, all of them stand out for me, but two are really great uh, people because they do something that I don't do on a daily basis, and they are very, very admirable. Uh, and one of them is Abbas Goulet of the Kenya Red Cross because of the humanitarian work that they put into their, into their business is, is really outstanding. Uh, the entrepreneurial spirit around what he has been able to achieve to me is, uh, is, is ad admirable. Another one is Eric Kimani of Palm House Foundation. I aspire and respect again because he is also so much involved in... Uh, supporting the, the youth in terms of education uh, through his foundation and 
that is, is really something that I admire and I aspire to do when I grow older, but I'm doing it right now, today, but do more of it. Well, many thanks, Rita, just to share your time with us and giving us this inspirational story of how you started and where you want to see the company. Many thanks. Thank you. Well, we've been speaking to one of the ladies in the industry who has managed to stand out in terms of driving this business into success. And of course, she has a great vision for this company. Well, that's all the time we had for. Do join us same time, same place next week.